Thank you to the organizers of the Invesomics Conference for organizing this very interesting regional meeting. So my name is Judith Tayaina and I'm a third year student at the Jimmy Lab in France studying the adaptive processes in the global invasion of Spodoptera frigipeda. I will be speaking to you about the four lamellar in general and then I will go on to speak about the results of two studies which was of interest to me during my thesis which is the inference of evolutionary history of the forlamidam and insecticide resistance in invasive populations of the forlamidam. So, Spodoptera frigipeda is also known as a forlamidam, which is its common name, and it belongs to the family Noctidae. Kirkwat et al. in their paper in 2021 showed that the genus Podoptera has 31 species. So if we look at this phylogenetic tree, we can see that here we have the four lamidum, there are two strains, the corn and the rice strains. So both corn and rice strain of the four lamidum are sympatric strains. The images here show male and female four lamidum, but between the two strains, they're morphologically indistinguishable. The corn strain prefers tall grasses like corn, sweet corn, and sorghum. And the rice strain prefers small grasses like rice, Bermuda grass and buckwheat. The two strains have different physiological features and exhibit differences in their pheromone composition and mating time. The two strains also can be identified using molecular markers including the mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase 1 subunit gene and thiose phosphate isoprase. So, this map shows the spread of the fall army worm. In 2016, the insect was first detected in South Tame, Africa, and within six years, it spread to most parts of Africa, Asia, Australia, and this year, it was also confirmed in New Zealand. Now, let's look at the results of my first study, which is inferring the evolutionary history of the fall army worm. Here is a list of samples I use and their information. We had samples from both the native and invasive population and the data was received in the form of larvae, resequencing data and GDNA. First, strain identification was done using the mitochondrial genome. For this, we classed the files according to their strain. In total, we had 177 individuals which were used for our study. 99 from the native population and 78 from the invasive population. The native population had 70 corn and 29 rice strain samples and the invasive population had 29 corn and 49 rice strain samples. This result showed that probably multiple introductions are involved in the spread of the insect. We then infer the population structure of the fall army worm from the whole nuclear genome for the analysis. In the results, PC1 on the x-axis shows three groups. The first group being the rice group from the Caribbean Sea, so countries in Florida, French Guiana and Guadeloupe. And the second group being all constrained individuals from Mexico, which is the blue dots on the right and the third group being the corn group in the middle. Now, y-axis, the corn group is separated into native and invasive populations. In conclusion, the PCA result shows that the invasive population is all corn group. We then studied the ancestry of invasive population using admixture analysis from single nucleotide polymorphisms. K is the number of ancestors. The results indicate that invasive populations have a single common ancestor, which is distinct from all other native populations, and which brings us to the conclusion that invasive populations are homogeneous and have a common ancestor. We then observe selective sweeps in our study, and as we can see from this image here, four loci were specific to the invasive population. We found seven outliers in invasive populations in total, three in common populations, but only four loci, as I showed in the previous slide, which were specific to the invasive populations. 
The identification of adaptively evolved genes in invasive populations suggests the possibility of insecticide resistance and host plant adaptation. For example, the locus of chromosome 14 corresponds to the CYP9A gene from the P450 gene family, which is a key player in the detoxification of biotics such as insecticides. And on chromosome Z, a cunid which plays a key role in plant digestion, and also an autoimmune receptor gene, also known as the gustatory receptor, is found. This study shows that invasive populations come from the corn strain and probable introductions from multiple populations were involved in the formation of the invasive population. All the individuals analyzed from the invasive fall army worms originated from a single population in an invasive area, probably from West Africa. The study also showed that invasive populations experience adaptive evolution, and this adaptive evolution may have caused insecticide resistance or host plant adaptation, which probably contributed to their success. So, from this previous study, we generated hypothesis that adaptive evolution may have caused insecticide resistance, which is the next step. The thesis of this study was that invasion of all army worm was caused by the spread of insecticide resistance. So for this study, we reused the same data from the first study and applied this to study both Bt insecticides and synthetic insecticides. The gene annotation of the ABCC2 gene and ranodine receptor and the S1 gene was done using Exonerate software and then IGV tools was used to visually explore the genome. Bt insecticides, we then studied the ABCC2 gene which has been seen to show resistance to Bt proteins and the mutations in the ABCC2 gene that we studied are shown in green here. So there are substitutions, insertions and deletions. So here is a table of all the mutations and the individuals with these mutations. All the mutations we studied were from the native populations and from the original country that these mutations were reported from. The GY deletions and the P2R substitution was found from the same two Brazil individuals in the homozygous state, suggesting a possibility that these mutations alone are not sufficient for Bt resistance. So, as an unidentified genetic mutation causing Bt resistance might exist, we investigated sequences with complete genetic differentiation between resistant and susceptible Brazilian individuals. In total, 49 single nucleotide polymorphisms had complete genetic differentiation with an FST equals to 1, and all these positions were found to be intronic. This result shows that the other causal mutations are not likely to exist in the tested individuals. So when studying the synthetic insecticides, we found all these mutations in the S1 gene, which is in relation with organophosphates and carbonates. Sector and the voltage-gated sodium channels. For the S1 gene, we then compared the propensity of the resistant mutation between the native and invasive populations. For this, the proportion of individuals having or not having the resistant mutations were calculated. The research showed that invasive populations have a higher proportion of individuals with the resistant mutations at A and B, and C, native populations have a higher proportion of resistant mutations. We calculated the p-value to make sure that the proportions of resistant mutations we saw in the invasive populations were not caused by chance, and we did this using the Fisher's exact test. In conclusion, the invasive population of the fall army worm involved the spread of resistant mutations at the S1 gene. Copy-number variation compared with the reference genome was observed from 47 P450 genes, which included 4, 12, and 22 genes belonging to clan 2, 
3 and 4 respectively. Invasive populations have lower numbers of deleted P450 genes per individual than the native population for all the clades. The invasive populations have higher numbers of duplicated P450 genes per individual than native populations in all the clades. Consequently, populations have higher numbers of P450 genes than the native populations. But this result supports the hypothesis that invasive populations have higher P450 gene numbers than in native populations through copy number variations. The p-values were calculated using the Fisher's exact test to make sure that the proportions of the resistant mutations we saw in the invasive populations were not caused by chance. So in conclusion, this study showed that Bt resistant mutations did not spread in invasive populations and invasive populations have increased copy numbers of p450 genes. At the S1 gene, there is an increased proportion of in resistant mutations in populations compared with that of native populations. We conclude that invasive populations might be under selective pressure for the resistance against sites. So if you would like to know more details, here is the paper for this study as well. Thank you to all our collaborators and thank you very much for listening.